My dearly beloved in Christ, you know that every priest has the unique privilege of being permitted to offer three Masses on Christmas. And the reason why there are three Masses in your Missal is to honor the threefold birth of the Son of God. And this is a privilege and a practice that goes back to the early centuries. The first birth, we might say, of the Son of God is that he is begotten from all eternity in the bosom of his Father. And it is that nativity that we especially reflect upon in the third mass. Then, of course, the Son of God became man and was born of the Virgin Mary at Bethlehem on Christmas, and that birth is particularly honored in the Midnight Mass, the first Mass of Christmas. But there is also the birth of our Lord in the hearts of those who accept him, those who have the true faith, who are baptized, who are living their faith. Our Lord, we can say, is born into our hearts, and he is born anew every time we receive him in Holy Communion, and also every time a person in the state of sin makes a good confession and receives anew the life of sanctifying grace. That is like another nativity, another birth of our Lord. We can also look upon the holy sacrifice of the Mass as a renewal of the nativity. That just as our Lord came down into this world and was born in Bethlehem, so he comes down on the altar in every Mass, and when we receive him, is once again born anew in our hearts. Imagine the tremendous joy of the shepherds. Of all the people in Bethlehem, they alone received the announcement of the angel and the invitation to come and adore the newborn Savior. They were, we might say, on the lowest rung of society. They were not wealthy, they were not noble, they were not important, and yet, in God's eyes, every soul he created is very important. So these poor, simple shepherds received the invitation to our door, our Lord. And after the beautiful singing of the angels, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of goodwill, it says in St. Luke's Gospel, they said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this word that has come to pass. And they found the child with Mary and Joseph lying in a manger. And it says they understood the word of the angel and they worshiped him. And the evangelist goes on to say, but Mary kept all these words in her heart. In other words, she reflected upon them. And this is what we call mental prayer to think about the truths of our faith, the mysteries, the stories we read in the Gospels, and to reflect upon them, to meditate upon them, and then to make acts of love of God and adoration and thanksgiving and all the various virtues that, and thoughts that are prompted by a reflection on these truths. So our Blessed Mother is a beautiful example to us of prayer. She pondered these things. She kept all these words, it says, in her heart, reflecting upon them. And then, of course, eventually came the Magi, a feast we celebrate separately on the Epiphany. They came to adore our Lord, and like the shepherds, they found the child with Mary, his mother. All of those, we could say, who find Jesus who truly come to know and love Jesus, find him through a devotion to Mary. Because our Lord is not separate from his mother. St. Louis Marie de Montfort in his book on True Devotion says they do not have God for their father who do not have Mary for their mother. And I think those words are very significant in St. Luke's, uh, St. Matthew's Gospel of the Magi, is they found the child with Mary, his mother. All of those who find Jesus are able to do so and find the true faith, 
are able to do so because they honor our Blessed Mother, the Mediatrix of all graces. They pray to her for guidance, for enlightenment, and she leads them to her Divine Son. Now let us come back to this Mass, the third Mass of Christmas, which honors the eternal birth of God the Son from God the Father. This is a mysterious truth of our faith that we read about in the Catechism, the Holy Trinity, that there are three persons in one God. All three are co-equal and co-eternal. God the Father begets God the Son, and the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father and the Son. And this is a process that has been going on from all eternity and will forever. And if you read the Gospels, you find our Lord so much speaking about his Father, how he loved his Father, how he did the will of his Father. And he only sought to do the will of his Father. And we see this love of God the Son for God the Father, giving us a little glimpse into the, that life of the Holy Trinity, which we shall gaze upon in rapture for all eternity in heaven. So the birth, the eternal birth of God the Son from God the Father, not implying any inferiority, but nevertheless a process, a procession of persons that is revealed to us in Holy Scripture. We read for the gospel of this Mass what we know as the last gospel. It is the prologue of the gospel of St. John. In the beginning it was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And St. John wrote his gospel, believed to have been the last book of the New Testament to be written even after he wrote his Apocalypse. He wrote his Gospel particularly to refute the heresy, even before Arianism, that was denying the divinity of Christ. And so he says very, very clearly, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made through him. Without him was made nothing that has been made. And then he goes on towards the end of the selection that we read, each day for the last gospel, he goes on to say, and the word, God the Son, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We say those words when we pray the Angelus and we genuflect. We genuflect when we read them in the gospel and also in the creed. During the creed, when we get to those words and was incarnate in the womb of the Virgin Mary and was made flesh, we, we genuflect at that reflection, that profession of faith in the incarnation. So God the Son became man for us and then was born in Bethlehem. And what is amazing is that he was born in poverty, in humility, humiliation, in weakness, in suffering, because he came to redeem us. He came to give his life for us. So the whole message of Christmas is love. It is the love of God that he promised Adam and Eve that he would send a Redeemer and that our Lord then did come to fulfill that promise of a Redeemer and was born in Bethlehem that he might grow up and eventually die for us, to redeem us that we might have the opportunity to get to heaven. May we love him with all our hearts and especially prove that love by the way we live. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.